way. You, you guys all look so scholarly with your books behind you. It's like I need to turn my computer. <laughs> so. There you go. Yeah. I'm, I'm, uh, this week I'll be packing up a bunch of them and handing them off. So is that it? It's just taking up an awful lot. Oh, whoa. you win. You and win. I got, <laughs> That's I right. More yeah. upstairs, and uh, <laughs> they're not getting used as they should. So I'm taking it to our, our seminary students. And they will, they will look and enjoy them. <clears throat> Gave a bunch to my son in law, who's a pastor in Cleveland, Tennessee, and to my son, who's a pastor in Madison, Wisconsin. Keep saying, hey, take them now or I'm giving away to <laughs> others. So. And Chris, where are you located? Uh, just outside Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Okay. A town called Waukesha, a suburb. It's about 20 miles to the west. Been up here 37 years. So it's, it's, it's almost like home. So, but, it, but I've enjoyed it. I, uh, Planted and pastored up here from 92 till 2018. Stepped down from the church, started a ministry called Next Gen Pastors, passed that on to um, to Geneva Benefits, and then stepped into this role full time. I was consulting for a couple of years prior. So it's been good. All right. Well, why don't we get underway? Um, yeah. Thank you for. <laughs> Making the time, we it is being recorded. I'll uh, I'll download it that way. You can can make use of it if there's anyone else that that missed it. I have other recordings of going over stuff, but since I'm doing it in in southeastern Alabama, Presbyterian, it would be good to, for them to see it here. I know Caleb Callaway couldn't make it, and he was interested. I actually set up a meeting uh, with him to go over some specific things in, in Dothan that, that he's doing there. So. Again, uh, Chris Vogel, I'm the Church Planning and Vitality Coordinator for Mission of North America. I've uh, been in this role for about two years and three years prior was a consultant. At uh, that earlier phase, the, my title was Ecosystems Development Director, uh, which is just wonderfully ambiguous. Um, <laughs> so I got to kind of say, I'm doing my job and nobody could, com could, con could complain. Um, but one of the things that I've, I have used this, this program uh, for about 15 years um, in its different permutations and have found it very helpful. Different regions have had signed on, but about two years ago, as I stepped in this role, I wanted to see this, see us to have a, a national contract that would allow uh, presbyteries to sign on, um, bring the cost down, but also allows, um, allows me to kind of give help and, and other um guidance to churches and presbyteries, church planters to, to say, hey, if this, is, this is, is available and this is what it can do. It's a powerful program. Um, it is one that I think a lot of, it, it all depends on the makeup of the pastor. If, if you're a kind of a data geek, you'll, you'll love it. Um, but you can go down a rabbit hole pretty quick um, with it. So I often just say, hey, if you know someone in your church that loves doing kind of data mining and finding stuff out and producing reports uh, for the church, for the presbytery, that, that helps as well. I, I did use this not only to help with church planning up here in Wisconsin, um, but also uh, in, in, as, a, as a pastor, because it provided really good data for me to remind me, I knew the congregation, I thought I knew the congregation, knew the congregation I was preaching to, but I, it was easy to forget the community in which our church was located. And so on occasion, I would, I would jump in here and it would help me think through issues of application, um, illustration in, in context of sermons and, and, and such because of the way it, it gave information. It also is, um, for, for some, it can be a little scary in that this had like, you know, as we all know, um, there's information out there on, on us that goes pretty far and deep and it can, it can kind of begin to wonder if it's time to break out the, you know, tinfoil hats and look out for black helicopters because I, I can pinpoint, um, 
you know, your neighborhood and tell you who your neighbors are and what their income level is, education, you know, a whole, whole shooting match. Uh, so it is in that sense, a, a little frightening, but it's out there and it's been used in many different ways and to, to use it, to be able to, to reach our community is a worthwhile or worthwhile opportunity. Well, let me do a screen share and uh, I'll jump in here. So when you, uh, you know, you log on, you'll get the map. We have plotted out um, as of about a year ago, all of the churches in, um, in our, our denomination, hence all the dots. Um, so if I zoom in here, um, and so you can see where, where all your churches in the um, southern part of Louisiana. I'm, I'm sorry, Alabama. And um, second, are, are you seeing? Okay, I, I lost your faces. You went over to my other screen. Oh, there you go. And please, you know, stop me at any point um, to ask any, any questions as we go through. So with this, you can, you know, set, set boundaries. Um, so, you know, we've, we've plotted all of the uh, presbyteries, again, as of a little while ago. There's going to be some, some updating. And I don't know why, for example, this boundary looks like this. So this is where it's helpful. Is is covenant? This is the Alabama line, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure why there's a line here. I um, believe you're in Georgia. Uh, yeah, that's, uh, Georgia. Is, that's Georgia. So is is this Georgia? Mm -hmm. Okay, so so your Presbyterian line goes here. No, keep going. Keep going west. Keep going west. One second. Oh, good heavens! Yes, I see now. I was zoomed in too close. There's your presbytery. Hey, our church is no longer in Southeast Alabama Presbytery. Is that, uh, should I be concerned? Yeah, <laughs> this is why bottom. we're having the meeting. We wanted to talk to you about this. <laughs> Parker, I've got some bad news. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, apparently. All right, let me just see. Yeah, this this helps because it allows me to... Um, are, you, are you down here? That's right. What, what town is that? That's Bruton. It's Scambia County. Yeah. All right. You know, so when they drew the lines, that's why it's helpful. All right. So, so you can see here, you know, where all your churches are. You can also go through and um, say, okay, I want to do, you know, all, all the zip codes want to be able to to look at at counties and and you could zero in on like th this county here and just get that on that um all sorts of things. some places are looking at high schools and they want to they want to get a church in every high school district for example um so there's a whole lot of ways of of examining and figuring that out but then that's the when, when you're going to do uh, layers and try to figure out what that might look like. Um, that's the layers. But then just to say you want to go to an area and just, just draw a shape. So is there a, a specific place that just as an example, you'd want to take a look at? Is there a town or an area? Um, you know, you could do Montgomery or, or we're on mute, aren't we? No, we're on mute. Okay, help me out. Am I, I think I'm zeroing in here. Yes. Coming into Montgomery. Um, so, so let's just say here, as you look at this, um, I'm seeing Trinity Eastwood, Young Meadows first is up here. Where, where's the growth in Montgomery right now? Would you say? Is it South? Mm -hmm. East, east, east. East. Okay. And how far east? Uh to um I can't read that. Like Pike Road. Pike Road, um Macon County line. Yeah. Macon County line. Uh, keep keep going east. Um, 
it would be uh the 180 that little this little loop there it's 108 yeah that would be bound that'd be the outer boundary okay well let's let let's just say for sake of doing something here find my cursor it's small i'm just gonna go to say this area north of of the interstate and you can you can adjust this let's you know say actually i'd like to keep it inside the beltway here and uh you know bring it bring it down so you know you, you can adjust that how, however you like and then say okay what i want to run a demographic report now you can build your own with this and make all sorts of choices and and create different kinds of of reports um that would be both demographics and also a, a religious belief ministry type of thing but um what is that 85 is that the interstate thing there it's a little but I think one of the quick and easy, well, there's a two things. There's what's called a quick insight. And if you're looking at, let's say, six different areas, try to decide which one, I'd print a quick insight, uh, you know, one for each, and then you can kind of begin to zero in. But let's just say, okay, we're going to do an executive insight is a lot more, more detailed. And with that, there are other reports you can do that I'll show you in a minute. And it it produces it pretty quickly. Again, what some people have found, if, if they're doing some of this work on their own, it would often take them quite a while to, um, to do this kind of work, looking things up. Just, um, faces there. Okay, so um, the, this data comes from 2023. You know, not everything's always as quick. It updates each year. Um, it will give you 12 different insights into this area. Uh, and, you know, so what I'm seeing here is population from the year 2000 to 33, over 33 years will go from about 21,000 um, population up to about 26, 20, 27,000 over that time. It's somewhat leveling off. Most of the growth was here, but it still is a growing area. Uh, the makeup of the area is going to be predominantly African-American um, with 37%. But as far as the growth, it's greatly declining in, in, um, in white. It is growing mostly among Black um, African-American. You can see what those percentages look like. It's you know, at most communities, you're going to see aging. That's not a huge jump. Um, it's aging. It's younger, and and but aging about the same rate as the rest of the state, but overall younger than the state. You see school trends. You know where where are the kids in in their educational process? This type of stuff is what you know communities look like if they're going to build a new school. Incomes jumping up about just under thirty thousand over eighteen years individual income but here's the household income so it is growing and you can see where it's growing the most um now the biggest jump is over two hundred thousand, but you're only talking here um you know uh, relatively small numbers but still significant change there but it is growing more in the middle middle class area um you go through here you can see well okay this is over 50 percent single parents or if there's children in the home, um, over half are, are single parent um, raising kids. So if, if you were to plant a church there, one, you're already looking at a multicultural context. You're also looking at, a, a, it, it's not easy for churches who have an understandably rightly high value on marriage. How do we bring in single parents into this kind of a context um, without a sense of being judged? Um, and so 
a bit higher than the state average. Um, state average is, is under 50, is under 40% here. It's, um, you, you can see how they compare. Um, again, more on marriage education. Um, and what's interesting is it is more educated than the state in general. It's Montgomery. So you're going to have a higher number than the state average with a bachelor's or with a professional degree. You can see the breakdowns percentage-wise there. Two-thirds of those jobs are white-collar jobs. And it will list out what those jobs are. Now, this is where it becomes a bit more interesting. Um, if you're familiar with Experian, um, it's a credit card um, company. They monitor um, our credit cards and then kind of can, can predict. Um, they create profiles of, of, of us. And that's what all these names and numbers are, comes from Experian. So let me go over here. And it, 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 you have you, you you guys have access to the site now, correct? You you should. Have you gotten the code in that? Yes, I yes, I have. Okay. Good, good. Um, so you you have access to this document. Uh, you would need, I think you need to email them and they'll send it to you. You just can't get it off off there because of, you know, it's I forget how much, how many pages this is. Um yeah, 188 pages from Experian, but you you have full access to it. Um changed my things over here. Okay. So this then gives the breakdown of what all those things are. So when you swipe a credit card, there are uh, they they are taking information on all of these these aspects because they know who you are. They have an idea what your income level is. They look at what you're buying, um, and it, again, it gets a little um, frightening what they're they're able to to pinpoint. They then create, I think, 71 different um, types and categories based on income level. So if you're an A category, it's high, then B, then C, down. Older um, to singles, younger, crossing this way, singles versus families. Um, and they begin to plot what this looks like. And like I said, they come up with cutesy little names. Um, they, they, they weren't my idea. Um, so you look here in the state, 3.2% fit this one, the suburban style, suburban nightlife, but it's 23%. That's a huge number population. So a lot fit this D18 category. So for that, I would go down here. There, there is just a basic D that gives you the overall, but if you want to really break it down, D18 is this, and it will give you a little infographic who they are. Um, they're politically liberal, they're technologically uh, aware, as you'll see there, um, and a bit more about who they are, what their the head of household age range is, so they're uh, mid to late 40s, their family, um, high number of single females, you know, see where the income level is. Um, and that can kind of give, there's other things you can look at, at that, on that breakdown, uh, namely, one second, that's going to come out in another report that will come up in a second. Um, and then what's the, the generational breakdown. So it, it is pretty high millennial and gen X, um, are, are your predominant categories there. So is this one, the, one of the other reports uh, you can do is called a ministry report and the benefit that mm -hmm. still running. Any, any questions with it that, I mean, again, this is quick overview and, and you have access to it so you can jump in and, and do the same thing. I'm glad to send you these reports, but I know this isn't specifically where you're looking. 
there are two reports. Let me get this running while the other one's going. A Ministry Insight and Religious Insight done by the American Belief Study. Uh, this is a, a group that then feeds into Mission Insight. Thing to keep in mind with this, this report was last done in 2021. That skews the results. They do it every four years. So sometime this upcoming year, they'll have some new new data. But um, still, it's it's really helpful. That you, as I'll, you, you'll see in a minute, you'll just need to discount some of the, the info. Um, or or re rethink it through. So if you're thinking about how you know what, how do we serve these people? What are some of their their concerns? Um, as always, you know we don't change what we're going to say or do based on their felt needs, but it helps to know where they're at. How do we apply the gospel to that kind of a context and situation? And so there'll always be you know um, a, a chart and then a graph, and this is where you can see clearly their main concern is COVID-19. Well, it was done in 2021. So that's, everybody was, was talking about it. The, the new study, this is going to be greatly changed, but I would look at some of the, the other secondary ones, see how do they compare with, with the state. So there are things of, of um, unemployment, personal health, weight and diet, um, bullying um, for their kids, no doubt. Um, and then, you know, what are some of the other issues? So where are they at on these? So health crisis, illness is going to be the COVID numbers. But I would see here, caring for aging parents, they're, they're more stressed out. They're wanting to find time for their families. Again, a lot of these, that, that numbers you saw, these were the sandwich generation, 45 to 50 or 55. So they're, they're kind of balancing all these kinds of concerns. Um, some of the other things, you know, uh, is that not a huge concern whether their child is gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender. Um, they're not the concerns of domestic violence really aren't there. There are other other concerns that they register. But again, this gives you about 30 pages of charts and graphs that you can kind of go through and see how does it relate, apply, what's, you know, what's what are some of the factors here? Um some of them here, as you get into the reasons they gave for not participating in, in church, again, it's, it's what they're saying, whether it's the, the full story or not, but it, it does help to see, um, you know, that you're seeing here in the study area, it's a higher number do not believe in God than the U.S. average. Um, and they're finding church boring, uninteresting, it's not current, it's old fashioned. And again, how some of that all plays out, um, which can kind of help you think through somewhat, um, you know, religious people are too judgmental, which is some of the common things people will say, but it kind of throws it out in a graph and lets you see it in a couple different ways. Um, so if there's anything else here, you know, th this is always an interesting one and usually pops up more than religious people are, are too judgmental. They just didn't feel welcomed. So if there's means by which we can welcome people in, much higher rate of being able to keep them and um, engage them. You can see some of the things they're looking for in a context of a church. But then there's a religious insight, um, similar but different. In this this area, it, again, this will give you some of the scales. So you'll see here very strongly agree. God is love and invites the world into a loving relationship. Uh, I have a relation with one living God. So um, you're not going to see a lot of of uh, polytheists here, you know, because of the um, idea of a one God. But that's no big surprise. Uh, I believe God created the world and takes no further part in it. No, they they do not. Um, they, I mean, they do believe that's true. The negative is, is very low. Um, and again, you got about 30 pages of more data. And this is where I'm saying you could just go down a rabbit hole with it. Um, but as you're looking at an area, you want to zero in, and you're looking for a church planter or for your own church, how do we better reach the community? 
it helps you ask the questions you need to ask. And there is material on the site that will help walk you through each one of these reports. Look at this, talk about that. Um, again, what are some of the social moral values they're finding in this, this neighborhood? Um, and then it will break it down into views on marriage, uh, general religious preference. Um, again, this is self-reported. Um, some people don't know what they are um, or they'll just give any old answer. I, I saw that more in a more specific one here um, in, in some areas where, you know, PCA is much higher than I would have anticipated. Well, because they, you know, as they survey people, I'm Presbyterian, what kind? I don't know. PCA, sure, I'm that or vice versa. Um, but still, it, it helps to kind of get a, a sense of what's in that area. And that covers about that. Um, so that's, those are three kind of quick and easy reports that, that you're able to do. Uh, any, any questions with those to start? I had a quick question about the, the sources for that, that last one, when it talked about, uh, different views of God, how is, is are those numbers specific to Alabama or are you saying that those are really zeroed in on that polygon like how what what's the geographical region for what for those kind of questions yeah it it is uh let me see you can look up and there's a large paper you know that you can look at tell you how they did it it's a survey of about fifteen thousand american adults okay and this is where uh, this goes way beyond my understanding. As a pastor, mathematics is not a strong suit. Um, and statistics is, is, is tough. And you can do a lot with statistics. Um, my understanding is they have a large enough sample size that they can then intersect it with a number of other factors that allows them to be, this is pretty much where this is at. So it's not as though they interview this community necessarily, but they have enough samplings of people in Alabama that they can cross with the US. Some of it also then goes to, to connect with um, um, the Experian data. An example of that, this is all in the help menu when you go to, where were we? It was D. You had a D12. Was it D12? No, D18 that we said. So this is an example of something they did with this religious data, intersect it with the, the framework of the Experian breakdown, and then create a, again, these are profiles. This is not each individual per you know, always understand that it's you know statistics are a figment um they're they're a cross-section there is no real person behind this but you'll find it generally so um so they took this suburban nightlife experience thing and then looked at how, you know what are they looking for in ministry um in this swap now again there's 71 categories that you'll find them all over the u.s but I have found when I look at an area like, you know, in Montgomery as a as a metropolitan area and a growing area as you're moving out to the east there, um, it, it's going to have a, a pretty good sample um, to it. So it, it sort of tells you, um, you know, um, you know, where they're at, uh, you know, with, with religiously, what are they looking for in a church? Um, who, who is most like them um, and who are their neighbors. And then when it comes to different preferences, what, what's their preference? Um, what, what are they going to attach to? Um, what do they look like for hospitality? Uh, you know, you can kind of move through here, their worship preferences, um, what kind of educational preferences are they looking for? So, yeah, I don't know if that completely answers yeah, the question. Yeah you know it, yeah that's it, helpful yeah it, it kind of gives you a sense of of who you're working with it doesn't give you the exact 
exact thing. That that would be a specific study of that neighborhood. Chris, yeah. where um uh so once I've got my line drawn, where do I where do I then find the reports that you were mentioning? Yep. Okay. Yep. Sorry, I went through that quick. So you got the line demographics down here. And then you would just hit generate report. Oh, now I'm generating a report. I didn't want to do that. You would go down here and, and pick pick a report. And then, then you hit generate. And with that, it creates then a PDF report that you're able to, to save. Again, you, you can go through here and just say, I want to look specifically uh, families with children and gener generate a report just for that. And it will give, it won't be have quite the, the nice graphic layout to it, but it will produce um, a way of looking at it that you're able to to chart and see, you know, where 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 are they at just in this one one swap. Is there a way also to draw, like, can you get county specific uh, maps? I was looking yep. at the different lines, but I didn't see how to do that. So there you go to layers and you'd go to counties under the layers. And it looks like it's that kind of light orange. So with that, then I would, and you can, with some of these, you, you can have them create labels. Um, let's see, I'm going to identify this, this layer specifically, and then you go through the same process, um, and just do, um, Montgomery County and you would hit that and it would tell you what the, what it looks like for the county. Okay. And it would be Thank the you. same thing. Uh, like I said, you could do, uh, You could do a layer and just say, I want to look at high school layers um, because people often identify by high schools, especially in this kind of an, I would think in this area, would, would that be, is there going to be a difference between this high school here and the one North? Those are your, no Montgomery. So with that, you would be able to kind of go, okay, I want to, I want to zero in on this Jefferson Davis High School, <laughs> and 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 run a, a a report just on that, and see what's what's happening there. So yeah, the the shapes, the layers, you're able to do an awful lot with. Hmm. You know, so just it's helpful. Yeah, I mean, just like with this. I'm looking at it, so slight growth. It's predominantly African American high school. Let's see what the you know some of the similar factors. A little bit lower income, higher single parent. Is this, does this? If those of you from Montgomery, does this seem to be what you would experience? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So. Um, another thing that you can do with this, yeah, get rid of some of these things. Uh, one of the other things that is very helpful is, you know, you see where your churches are, you're able to go in here and, um, plot your members. Uh, you just you would download them in a, a CSV file and upload them into the system here. And there are a couple places we've done this. So um, see, so others are beginning to do it, which which is quite helpful. So here, I'm going to guess this is Clemson Presbyterian Church did it, and it will show you where all their members live. What you do then is say, okay, I'm going to draw a shape around most of our members right there. I 
did not want to. One second. Still giving me layers. Oh, well. So I'm going to, uh, should work. And I can pull up a, nope, I don't want to do that. One second. It's a really large area for one high school. Yeah. Yeah, we got the lake in there, that, that population. Um, let me go shapes again. I'm just going to do their, you know, most of their people are right there because the more it's spread out. And this then you could do what's called a comparative insight. And it will show you how does the church um, population reflect the community they're in. And so you can kind of say, are we really re reflecting our community? Are there places, people that, that we're not really connecting with? Um, and again, you can see their folks come out from a, a long range. I'm just, I went just to that, that center. And so here it's showing me, we're just looking at 151 people, 68 households. The area is about 9,000, about 3,600 households, which means th they're populating almost 2% of the population, which really isn't, isn't bad. Um, but it will show you how do they reflect their, um, you know, who, who they are versus a community. So there are uh, the 19 to 24. Now, part of that circle went into uh, Clemson, it looked like. So that's going to throw off some of those those numbers, the 19 to 24 year olds. Um, as you look here, they're not hitting, um, you know, they're almost a third or half of the 25 to 30 year olds, but they are certainly hitting a little bit more. So this is a little bit of an older congregation. Um, and you can look at, you know, how do they relate as far as kids? How are they with income? What's the, the ethnic racial breakdown? Where are they similar and different? Um, they're a little bit whiter than their community, but not a whole lot. I mean, they're, it's, it, it's fairly reflective. Um, then, then you can, then you'll go through and they'll take that mosaic thing is, how do their conger uh, their do the congregants of Clemson Prez reflect the, um, the the kind of stratification the profile of the community as a whole? Uh, and the next thing it does, which it can be, you want to be careful as you look at this, it's where are they at as far as income? So according to this, they did they the system determined there was one family that has an estimated income of that's an exact number i have no it, they don't know the exact number but that's what how they predict it and so you can see where their congregation is at um, compared to the community and with that given those numbers 150 families if they were to give 10 percent, they'd be giving 700 thousand because their the income predicted is um seven million uh, my my son-in-law's church in Cleveland, Tennessee, did this, um, and they were looking. They're in the process of building. They're they're up here, um, and they but before they they did this this study, they had contracted with a a um, uh, can't think of the name an organization to help with um, capital campaign. And, uh, you know, for fundraising and they came to them after a number of studies and say, your congregation is giving very well, but they're not deep pockets. Well, in, in about 90 seconds, I circled their members and came up with the exact same information. Um, I said, you know, I said, you know, Sam, your congregation, they give, they give well, they're strongly committed. They understand tithing, but they're not wealthy. You they're not going to have big, um, trust funds and, and, you know, deep pockets to write checks for a hundred thousand uh, for a new building or whatever. But that's, that's a great function for an established church to be able to do. And, and some of these churches are beginning to fill, fill that in. Any questions there? One of the other features, and I usually just go back out and start over again with it. 
odd. It doesn't let me. Okay. It's called neighborhood uh, or neighbor center. Um, and would uh, one of you just give me your home address, please? 114 Virginia Drive. 114. Okay, we're not in the. Uh, what, what, what town are we in? Bruton, B R E W T O N. Oh, yeah, you're the one who's been cast into the outer darkness of <laughs> non existent Presbytery. Okay. So then we go here, and you can begin to say, I'm looking for neighbors that fit certain qualifications. So, you know, this is a men and women, um, but, you know, married, and they're going to be, you know, anywhere along this line. Uh, right now, it's not worried about children, uh, education um, there, and, you know, income on a number of different levels. Uh, length of residence. Now, the data is going to be a little old. These are not true zero to six month residents, but they, they're they relatively new to the area. And then you could break it down according to the mosaic codes or the major groups. You could look for all the Mayans that live in Bruton or <laughs> those from Nepal who have surnames. But for now, I think we'll just uh, keep going forward with that. So That's you see all the red dots. Those red dots are now. Are you said you're on Virginia Avenue? Drive, yeah, I'm right there. Oh, drive, below, yeah. One below that's my house. That okay. one's mine. Is this you? Yep. Yep. Um, and but it gives you all that information again of um, you know, married. Are, are there kids present? Yes. Okay. Um. You know, it's not everything's perfect. You know, hits the age, gives that that background. What what's your ethnicity? And you can kind of look and see. Um, now you 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 can't download this information in a file immediately. I, as I understand, I've not done this. You can contact Mission Insight, and for a fee, they can feed you this in, information. So, for example, if you're wanting to do a VBS and I want to find all the homes in my neighborhood, my area that have kids ages three to nine, because that's going to be the prime target for a VBS. And we'll, we'll do a mailing. We'll stop by their home and drop something, you know, a door hanger or, or what have you. Um, and uh, that that type of thing, really, it, it's amazing in that sense of what it's it's able to do and the information it has. So those, those they're up here. I'm not seeing much down in this area that fit that, that profile. Um, so it's a... That's really cool. Yeah. And I'd say that's kind of where it gets a little, little weird. Let's be perfectly honest. Um... I think Ad address uh, help the software. I'm sorry, Chris. Where did you enter the address to to find Parker's home? What screen was that? That is in. This should work here. I've I've not done it through this means. Let me just see real quick. Plotting. What I've done before. Is when when you go in, and I'm going to need to. Usually, don't get that. Early on, you'll see these blocks, and it's yes. neighbor center. Yeah, mine wouldn't open when I tap that. I don't when know you why. tap that, then it should just say address. Okay, let me try again. Um, let's see. Yeah, 
and, and the fact is this is this is looking for all these people anywhere in the country you know so yeah. here's my, yeah my neighbor center it won't it's the only one that on that i guess seven icons won't it's not oh it's not clicking yeah, like it's it, it it doesn't they they flip up each time you do it it's not flipping yeah not yeah. either okay Take a note. Try going. Let me just see then. Let's um, when you go in. So you're just here on the map. Go to plotting. And if you open neighbor center there, can you can you do anything? Does that see, open up? It says. To use people plot, please notify your church agency administrator to upload people. Okay, yeah, no, people plot is is um is the the one up here where it shows you um yeah, where you upload. It's the next one down where it says neighbor center. Yeah, mine doesn't have that. I it's it just yeah, it, it automatically goes to that people plot. Yeah, it doesn't have the neighbor center. It's not enabled for some reason. I don't think it's enabled for us. Okay. Thank you. This helps. I will contact them. If uh, I'll, I'll, I'll look into this. If you're ever having a problem, help and just shoot them an email. Okay. Um, I have found them uh, pretty responsive. And there is, you can call too. They're really responsive if you call the sales number, but that's all true of all industries, I think. Yeah. But no, the, the, the support's been, been I have found pretty good, but I'll, I'll, I'm going to look into that. And think, at the same time, feel free to, to shoot them something. That, that should be the opening up, and I'm not sure why it wouldn't. Um, yeah. That, that's where that is. And where do you upload your congregations again? I've done it. So up there in that people plot. Oh wait, let me let me show you one thing rather than just what is <laughs> Helpful to know is there's a good, um, you know, guides how to do things. So if you want to do people plot, you would go through here. And it would it would give, give you the steps to, to go through. Gotcha. But I guess that needs to be enabled on our side before we can do that. Yeah, I don't know. So even the people plots not enabled. Yeah, it uh, says to to notify the church slash agency admin, administrator to upload people. Okay, I'm going to have to look and see if it's just they have something against southeastern Alabama Presbytery. <laughs> yeah, because I, I hadn't, yeah, you're all having that that issue. But but this is where you would go to, you know, saving a map, how to export maps, you know. There are also um, as you can see here, uh, various guides um, that can help you with with that. Um, you know, things you can you can print off. Um, as well as some of there are a number of videos too that that are here here they are okay the workshop handouts it, it can be can be helpful um for example if especially if you're working with a missions committee or a sessions looking at things and you want to look this is what i was saying you could print these off and it will help you 
look at each of the 12 insights in the executive report and ask questions. You know, what phase of life segments is or are the largest and are growing in your study area? You know, it kind of helps you focus in on things. So you're, you'd be able to, to kind of figure out what, what, what do we need to, to think about here and what are some of the lessons we might want to do a takeaway on it. Well, and I'll I'll get on there and and uh, shoot them a a question <laughs> why you're not so you're not getting either the neighbor center or the um, people plot are, are you seeing this at all no okay oh. all right yep I'll look into it. Thank you, Chris. That's yeah. uh, that's uh, kind of overwhelming, but wow, it what is. A <laughs> it is. It's kind of uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, it looks great. What a wealth of information. It so is. we need to hire somebody just to do this. Uh, <laughs> you know, most a lot of our churches, and certainly in your presbytery, you've you've got a wonderful data geek who who would just love to jump into it and uh yeah and, and get lost um that that's the kind of person as a pastor i think yeah it, it's overwhelming what it's fairly intuitive once you start doing it a couple times um it, it's they're working on redoing the 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 interface it's a little dated in some ways uh, but it, it does accomplish what it it needs to and there's things like i you know, I can look at a community when I'm working with a church planter somewhere, I can say, I've never been to your town, but this is what this, this neighborhood is like. And I'm, I'm not looking at pictures. I'm just looking at numbers. Um, so it's kind of, kind of like the matrix. Um, mm -hmm. All those ones and zeros are telling me more than I could ever imagine. And I don't have a cable attached to the back of my neck. <laughs> Well, certainly reach out at any time. There's anything I can do to help um, any other, you know, if you have any problems, like I said, quickest thing to do is, is go to that help button, go down to the contact us and support email them. Um, but, but if, if you're having any frustrations uh, and not getting what you're looking for, getting the answers, uh, reach out. And if, if you're looking, even in, you got access, everything's going fine, but still need some more clarity on, how to do a report. You, you've got my, um, you should have my email, which has my Calendly uh, link to schedule a time. Feel free to go on there and do it. Um, September through December is heavy travel time. So there's not as many, but if you can find a spot, I'd be glad to, to you know, take another hour or so and, and run through some of this to help, to help you guys out. Thank you so much, Chris. Great. Thank you, Thanks, Chris. Great. Well, Thank you. My, my pleasure. Take care. Thanks. I guess you can.